In the world of tennis, how do you think a young and talented player who has never played professionally suddenly gets a chance to contest in the big leagues? It is not news that every tennis player wants a chance to play and contest against the greats, thereby making a name for themselves in the League of Legends. In this video, we will be talking about the various ranking systems in the world of tennis, breaking down the various major tournaments that a player has to be involved in in order to take their place in the list of top-ranking tennis players in the world of tennis. Contesting and winning matches in a Grand Slam tournament is the breakthrough that every young and aspiring tennis professional needs. However, getting to play in any of the Grand Slam tournaments, like the Australian Open, the US Open, the French Open, and Wimbledon, isn't as easy as some might think it is, myself included. So sit back and relax as we break down the hurdles that lead to becoming a top-ranked player in the world of professional tennis. To earn ranking points in tennis, players must participate in events hosted by the ITF, or the International Tennis Federation, ATP, the Association of Tennis Professionals, and WTA, Women's Tennis Association. Players' participation influences tennis rankings in these events, a player's 18 best results in the last 52 weeks determine a player's ranking. The more points a player has, the higher their ranking. If a player performs better than the previous year, they win more points. If they perform worse, they lose points equivalent to their losses. This fluctuation in the player's points influences their rankings. The ATP has four tiers of events, which are the Grand Slams, the Masters 1000, the ATP 500, and the ATP 250. The Grand Slams are four tournaments made up of four high-ranking tournaments, namely the US Open, Wimbledon, the Australian Open, and the French Open. These are the most sought-after tournaments, not only because of their prestige, but because of the points that winning them would give a player. The draws in these events are significant, with 128 players in the main draw and 128 players in the qualifying draw. And because of that, players need to be ranked between 1 to 250 in the world to play. The winner of this tournament gets a total of a whopping 2,000 ranking points, while players who exit in other rounds get specific points allocated to those rounds. The winnings are not only limited to the ranking points because they can also boost a player financially. Players who play in the qualifying can earn as much as $20,000. That's a lot of pay for just showing up. The Masters 1000 awards its winner with 1,000 ranking points, and subsequent winners have points allocated to them too. The same goes for the ATP 500 with its winner, with 500 ranking points, and ATP 250 with its winner at 250 ranking points. Basically, the names of these tournaments speak for themselves. The Grand Slam being sort of a grand total of all points and extra 250 points added to it. Aside from the ATP Tour events, we have the ATP Challengers, which increase points for progressing in tournaments. The Challengers Tour is similar to the ATP Tour, where the names of the tournaments also correspond with the points awarded to the winners. There are six different Challengers tournaments, Challengers 125, Challengers 110, Challengers 100, Challengers 90, Challengers 80, and Challengers 50. Each of them comes with a name that shows the number of points that their winners will be rewarded with. However, besides the challenging tour, ITF Futures circuits represent the lowest rung of the men's professional tennis ladder. Here, even some unranked players participate in the tournament, hoping to build a name for themselves. On the other hand, the WTA is a professional tennis association for women, as the ATP is for men. The WTA hosts similar tournaments to the ATP. The women also participate in Grand Slams, with a total of 2,000 ranking points for the winner. Other games in the WTA are the WTA 1000, WTA 500, and WTA 250. Each of these events has a different points distribution system, with their names showing the amounts of points they offer, just as the men's ATP. That's what you thought, right? Well, you're wrong. Unlike in the ATP, these numbers do not necessarily mean the total number of points earned by players. For instance, the WTA 1000 has nine tournaments, four of which are mandatory, while the other five are not. Here, the WTA 1000 mandatory event winners get 1000 ranking points, while the winners of a non-mandatory event earn 900 points. In WTA 500, the winner receives 470 ranking points, while WTA 250 gives winners 280 ranking points. 
Having explained how points are given, how they can be gotten, and through what tournaments, let's look at Novak Djokovic, his playing, and his rankings over the years. For players to make the big tournaments in tennis, they need to climb the rankings, and they do that on their own instead of what we have in order team sports like basketball and football. It is right to say that Djokovic started his tennis career at age 4 when his father handed him his first racket and a soft foam ball. At age 6, Djokovic went to tennis camp, and we can see how the reformation began in Navi Sad. Every player, as well as Djokovic, starts off their ranking from ground zero, and everyone has to show what they have and win matches to scale up their points. Djokovic started playing nationals for his country, Serbia, through singles and doubles, from 2001 to 2005. Djokovic played mainly in futures and challengers tournaments. During this time, he was an average tennis player trying to make a name for himself to get into the big games. These tournaments are worth significant points and help boost a player's rankings. They are not like the Grand Slams, but players get a glimpse of what it feels like to be at the top. Players gather the necessary points and experience, get paid, and even have a few fans watch them play. There are no challengers and futures on the women's side, but other events spread into the ITF Women's World Tennis Tour calendar where they earn between 15,000 and 100,000 depending on their winnings with different levels and awards. In 2003, Djokovic tore his way through the junior circuit and played his first professional game in Belgrade, where he played at the US Open and French Junior Open. He won five ITF tournaments and was ranked 40th best junior tennis player and 679th best player worldwide. And with this, he could enter even more tournaments than he did the previous year because of a boost in rank points, gradually making his way to the big leagues. Five years later, Djokovic had put himself through a series of games and became a fast shining star. By now, he had moved from playing in the juniors to playing directly in the ATPs, the dream of every tennis player. The tournaments were more significant and the rewards got better for him. As of 2008, Djokovic was third in the world playing in the big games. Djokovic at this time played in the Australian Open and reached the Grand Slam Finals without dropping a single set, including a victory over the two-time defending champion Federer in the semifinals. At this time, he became the youngest player in this era to have reached the semifinals of all four Grand Slam events. By 2011, Djokovic had made it to the top most ranked player in the world, number one. It is worth noting that Djokovic didn't just get there by hanging around and waiting to be offered some imaginary ranking points, but through a series of hard work and consistency from a player determined to be the best in the world in his own field of play. For a player to remain top ranked, he must put in a lot of effort and play in as many tournaments as possible. Between 2011 and 2022, Djokovic has won the number one player in the world seven times and holds a record of 370 weeks of being world number one. Pretty astonishing. The various ranking systems have been put in place to enable players to understand what it takes to dream and become the best in the world. Like every other major sport, these ranking systems give players the opportunity to understand the value of a rough start and push forward through the various tournaments thereby making their way to the big leagues and achieving their dreams of becoming the best of the best. Although he is currently the seventh ranked player in the world, even though he finished in 2021 being the number one ranked player in the world, should we expect a comeback from Djokovic by the end of 2022? With all the games and experiences coupled with awards and championships won by Djokovic, he has had an incredible experience in his tennis playing years and would have no problem being a contender for the title greatest of all time.